All right, so today we're just going to be doing the important tools in Inkscape. Uh, we'll just go through the sidebar here, work our way down, and just hit the important stuff. So first we're going to do just the normal selection tool. Just talk about this real quick. Uh, it's very obvious. Go ahead, select things, move them, anything like that. You can go ahead and select and drag, and you can get things like that. Um, this is helpful also. If you'll notice, if you don't select the entire thing, it won't select. And... Uh, this is helpful for situations such as this where you just want to select, say, these two or something like that. And, you know, you happen to go over away. And this way you only select these two. And, uh, you know, anything like that. So that's great. And also you'll notice when you click them, once you'll see you have little drag boxes here. We can stretch these out. Horizontal, vertical, both. Um, and also, though, if you click once and then click again, it brings up some more. we got some skewing going on here. Uh, so rotating, things like that. Um, you can hold the control to keep everything kind of locked in place as so. And that goes with diagonal dragging also. It'll maintain your aspect ratio. And that's about it for our selection tool. So what we do have now is our node selection tool. Uh, you'll see that it brings up individual nodes, things like that, that we get to work with. Uh, for square specifically, you'll see there's a circle one here. You can go ahead and drag that, and you can put rounded corners and stuff like that. So that could be particularly helpful. Uh, so that's good. And uh, let's see. Um, this tweak objects, I don't use it. Zoom in or out, it's a little, little redundant. It's a little self-explanatory, but if you want to zoom in, you can go down the bottom right here and zoom in or enter a value. Um, or if you have a mouse and a scroll, you can hold control and then scroll on your mouse wheel. And that also can uh, zoom in and out. So that's not a very helpful tool. Um, let's see, we got our square drawing tool, which is very helpful. You can go ahead, drag things here. Uh, you'll see I still have my rounded corners here. We can go ahead up here and straighten that out. Uh, that's good. It's very self-explanatory. Click and drag, click and drag, and you get your shapes. So, easy as that. Um, it's our 3D tool. That's not very helpful. Um, we'll do circles, also very helpful. The same as drawing squares. You just click and drag, get circles. Um, but one thing with this is that you'll notice it's really hard to get perfect circles. So what we'll do is you can hold control, just like the squares, and you can keep a perfect circle. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we're all set. So that's a good tool as well. Um, another really helpful tool would be the polygon tool. And this might seem a little ridiculous at first. Uh, let's see, but you can adjust everything on it and make it very useful in design. So you can adjust the amount of corners here, the spoke ratio, which is the height of your spokes here. Uh, you can round the tips a little bit if you want. A whole number of things. And this is particularly helpful for if you want some sort of like splash effect. Um, for, you know, say you're doing a design or something like that, and, you know, you want, you know, uh, deals, or something cheesy like that, <laughs> but you get what I mean. We'll go ahead and just delete those. Okay, so that's the uh, polygon tool, and let's see, the squiggly tool, no idea. Uh, freehand lines, I don't use this too often, uh, it's pretty... Just a freehand drawing tool. Uh, you can adjust the smoothing up here for your... You can see it smooths it out a lot more. You turn up all the way. It practically gets rid of all jagged edges. Or it could go the complete other direction and just turn all the way down and have just the sloppiest line in the world here. Um, but this will be a good example here to demonstrate some more of our nodes. Uh, if you click our node selection, you can see each individual one brings it up here. And you can go ahead, click and drag. You have your Beezer Curve nodes here. So you can go ahead and adjust anything like that. You can also select just a few nodes at a time by clicking and dragging. Uh, you can click and hold and hold shift. And uh, you can select multiple ones that way. All that good stuff. So there we go. We covered our pencils. And this one is useful, our pen tool. Uh, just draw straight lines. Things like that, and you can link them up like that. But this is really helpful for tracing, you'll find out. Um, so you can do 
a bunch of different lines like that. And if you want, you can select your nodes, and then you can go and you have all of these options up here. My favorite is this one here, which smooths the nodes, and then puts all beezers on everything. So that's very helpful. Um, let's see, and also with the pen tool, you can click and hold and do beezer curves like that. You can bring those all the way around and do some neat designs with that. So that's cool. Um, let's see, our brush strokes. Yeah, this is this is neat. Uh, it's not very useful though, not for uh, not that I found anyways. And another very important tool is our text and font. Now this is great. We'll just do this. So if you click and do it, you can go ahead, type anything like that, blah, blah. And uh, you'll notice that, uh, let's see, if you select this, um, that different text box open if we click and just start typing, or if we click and drag, you'll see that we have a box that we can type in now instead. So you can, yeah, there you go. So those are two degree difference. Let's go ahead and delete those. But, say you, you want to do something like that. Um, <clears throat> you can go ahead, you have your fonts all right here. Uh, I actually prefer going up to text itself and going to text and font. You can preview all of these different things up here. So that's very helpful. Uh, we have some cool text editing here. You can do some letter spacing, which tends to be very helpful. Do some really neat designs that way. That's pretty cool. You can go ahead and mess around with that. And uh, spray tool, not so one. The eraser tool is pretty awful. Um, fill bounded areas, not too important. The gradient tool is important though. So what we'll do, we'll just put a gradient on here. And if we have our gradient selected, we'll hit our gradient tool. And you can see it brings up our actual gradient nodes. So you can adjust the color. Uh, spacing and stuff like that, the direction, and set up your gradients that way. So that's good. And then just the normal color dropper tool is pretty self-explanatory also. If you have a different color and you want the object to have that color, you can take your dropper and just kind of do your thing like that. So that's neat too. Well, that pretty much touches every single important tool in Inkscape. I hope this was of some help to you, and uh, have a good one.